Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about airfoil cosine spacing. Uh, to get some context for this video, you might want to check out my other video about generating data points for the NACA 4-digit airfoil series, although this cosine spacing can be used for generating any airfoil data points. So let me first pull up my uh, airfoil GUI in MATLAB that I have. Uh, I'll first change the plot as down here to dot to make it easier to see. Uh, and then I'm also going to reduce the number of plotted data points, so grid points down from 100 to 50. Uh, you'll note that the grid type here is currently set to uniform, and I'll click plot airfoil here, and you can see the airfoil plotted here with dots for where the data points are. And you can see that they're evenly spaced along the x-axis. I'll plot the camber line as well so you can see. So they're evenly spaced along the x-axis from 0 to 1. And here's the challenge. You can see that the leading edge has a higher curvature here uh, than the middle of the airfoil does. Uh, which is more gently sloping. So in order to more accurately resolve this leading edge and even the trailing edge over here, we can increase the number of data points that we plot. So I can change this to 100 and I'll plot it again and you can see now we can more clearly resolve uh, the leading edge here. But when we simply plot the airfoil as we are here, the increase in computational time is minuscule, it's not even noticeable. However, the problems arise as we input our airfoil coordinate data file into other software such as a panel code or even a CFD code. And with more data panels or data points, these programs will run much slower. But we know we need to resolve the leading edge and trailing edges very well in order to get good results from these simulations. So the question is, what can we do? So in order to increase the data point distribution at the leading and trailing edges, we can use cosine spacing. So let's bring the number of grid points down to 50 again. Uh, so the effect is more pronounced. And now, uh, let me plot that again. And now I'll change the grid type from uniform, which it is right now, to non-uniform, which is the cosine spacing, and I'll plot it again. And you can see a higher density of points near the leading edge and trailing edge, less points in the, uh, in the, less, uh, in the more gently sloped uh, middle of the airfoil. And this is for the, so, uh, for the same amount of total data points. So the question is then, how is this done? So first I want to just jump into the MATLAB code real quick just to show you what's being done for both the uniform and non-uniform and then we'll get to the whiteboard to show you how it's done. Uh, so for the airfoil grid section in my code, you see this is for the uniform spacing. And if you look at this, it's the lin space operator which uh, just plots or just gives you an array from 0 to 1 with the number of data points in that array grid points. And you specify the number of grid points in the, oops, in the GUI here into here. Okay, so that gives you that distribution from 0 to 1 with the number of grid points in between. And this is for the non-uniform spacing, and you can see that it's one extra line, and you actually didn't even need two lines. I could have put this into here, uh, so it's still one line technically. But this gives you a lin space, so it makes an array. Now it goes from 0 to pi with the number of grid points, and then we plug it into this equation here. And so let's get to the whiteboard and show you how this equation works. So I'm first going to start with the uh, linear spacing along the airfoil just to get a feel for what this plot means, because I'm going to be using this plot for the cosine spacing. So you recall from the code, it's we're using the lin space 0 to 1 in for the number of grid points. And I'm going to assume 50 grid points here, and even though there's not 50 points on here, just make believe, because that's what we use in the code. Now, if you look at this plot, I know the x is on the y-axis that you're normally used to, but it's going to make sense when you look at this airfoil here. So we're going to click, uh, put the x on the this axis here, the number of grid points on this axis here. So you can see we're going from uh, 0 to 50, and on this axis we're going from 0 to 1, and that's what this is saying, 0 to 1. And I've drawn the airfoil here, and it's vertical, and this is, what, this is how you should really think about it when you're looking at this plot, is this vertical airfoil, and these points here are going to be distributed uh, along this airfoil like this. So you can see that we're going from 0 to 1 and we should have 50 of these, there's not 50 here, but you should have 50 of these data points evenly spaced from 0 up to 1. Okay, and that's what this is saying. So for each grid point, each 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 50, they're evenly spaced going up to 1 like this. And you can see that what you can do is from this plot you can draw the line over to the corresponding data point on the airfoil. They're all evenly spaced uh, here, and you'll get that even spacing, uniform spacing along the airfoil. Okay, so now let's change this for uh, non-uniform, for the cosine spacing. You can see that if we want more points around the leading edge or the trailing edge, the way to do this is to, is to have something that looks like this. We want more data points down here and more data points up here, less data points in the middle. So what you can do is have something that looks like this some distribution that looks like that, where these are still data points. So if we have a data point here, 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 you can see that they're gonna be closer 
It's a little cluttered, but they're going to be closer to the leading edge when the slope is lower. And when the slope is pretty high, you're, you're going to have more widely spaced. And then back to a lower slope here, you're going to have uh, denser spacing. So let's break down the cosine spacing. Okay, now I've got the equation up here for the cosine spacing, and I've drawn it color-coded so we can step through and see what the plots look like so we can see where the final equation comes from. And the one thing to remember, uh, two things to remember. One thing is to remember that we need to go from zero to one. Uh, we need our airfoil to go from zero to one. And that's because we have this normalized uh, airfoil from zero to one normalized by the cord length so that when you generate the uh, airfoil data coordinates, you can multiply by your cord length to get your actual uh, size of your airfoil. So that's the first thing. The other thing is that when we're looking at the x-axis here for the grid points, they're always going to be uniformly spaced because this here, this is grid point one, grid point two, grid point three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are always going to be uniformly spaced. It's this direction, that's why the airfoil is drawn vertically, it's this direction that's going to be changing in spacing based off of how you pick these lines. Okay, so those are the two things to remember. Now let's start here. We're looking at the beta from the code. The beta is the lin space from zero to pi for the number of grid points, okay? And I've color coded here, uh, kind of hard to see, but this is the blue one here. So you can see this one, we're going from zero to pi, number of grid points. I think there's 28 here, but it uh, doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going from zero to pi. This looks similar to the other one for the linear or the uniform spacing, except that one went from zero to one and we were done, right? Because we wanted to go from zero to one. So here we're going up to pi. Okay, now if we plug it into this uh, cosine term, so cosine of beta, so cosine of this, that gives this green curve here. And we're starting from one and we're going down to negative one. And you can see that this is the cosine distribution uh, from zero to pi. So if you look at a plot of, of cosine, I guess I should draw like this, and this is the plot of cosine, we're going from one, this is the full plot to two pi, this is what it looks like, out to two pi. And if you go down just to pi, we're going from one to negative one. And so what you're seeing is really this plot from, uh, from zero to pi that's just uh, tilted 90 degrees. And that's what you're seeing here in the green. So that's what happens when we uh, take the cosine of the, this line here. The next thing we wanna do is one minus cosine beta. So if we do one minus one, we get zero. If we do one minus negative one, we get two. And so in this red, you can see that we're going from zero and we're going all the way up to two. But the problem is that we need the distribution from zero to one. So the way that you can get this zero to two to be from zero to one is to take one half of that. So that's final expression that you saw in the code is one half of that one minus cosine beta. So it's one half of the red curve. And you can see that in the black here, we've just taken half of this red curve and it goes from zero to one with the same shape uh, as the red one. And now we have our distribution from zero to one and you can see that it has uh, higher density points because the slope is lower at the bottom here. Then the slope increases and we get a less distribution or lower distribution and the slope decreases again and we get a higher distribution at the trailing edge. So a lower slope. Uh, lower slope means higher distribution, higher density of points. Higher slope means less point or less density, lower distribution of points. And that's how you get the airfoil uh, cosine spacing. So the last thing I want to show you is just the simple code and it makes the uh, it makes the plot look a little bit nicer than my than my board. And you can see here that I'm doing 50 grid points. X-axis is grid points, so we go from 0 to 50. Uh, the y-axis, which is my x, a little confusing, goes from negative 1 uh, up to 3.5, and you can see that the black line here is is the uh, is just the lint space. So we're going from zero up to pi. Uh, val one, which is plotted as red dots, is the cosine of that. And you can see going from one to negative one. And val two is the blue dots, and that's one minus cosine. And we're going from zero up to two. And then to get the distribution from zero to one, we take one half of that, and we get the blue or nope, the magenta from zero up to one. So thanks for watching.